Hey, Ashwell Things Dentistry, the place where we're passionate about sharing those unwritten hints. These might be written, but let's go ahead and review them because they can be really frustrating. So we've got a tooth and alginate. We're just practicing our access and then cleaning and shaping. And what we wanted to do was, I was kind of thinking about working length. So, so these are some of the tips because we've worked with a lot of new dentists and you know, working length can be really challenging. So let me give you a couple of tips right up front. So your apex locator, make sure the battery's full. This is about half, so you know, the probability of success of a reading is so-so. But before you get started with your apex locator, go ahead and just to make sure it works, uh, touch the file holder to the lip clip, that makes sure it works. The next thing is sometimes if your apex locator doesn't work, you can, look how brown and dirty that is. It's not dirty, it's just tarnished. So if you, this still has connectivity, but sometimes this gets tarnished after two million sterilizations. So if you're not getting, when you do that, when you do this and you get nothing, like it goes goes like this, like nothing, what you can do, or what you should do is just before you run around and look for another apex locator, go ahead and either take some steel wool and clean this up or just grab another file clip. It's You don't have to throw it out, it's still good. Just clean that up. So that's the start. That's kind of like our pre takeoff checklist. The next thing is that, so, you know, you're doing a working length and your reading is kind of like we, we like this, you know, it's just uh, drives you crazy. So what you can do, there are two, there's maybe three, three basic problems. The first simplest troubleshooting is you might have too much liquid in your canal, too much hypo or EDT or whatever. So you just dry some of that out. It doesn't have to be bone dry, but sometimes drier the tooth helps. Don't know why. I'm sure there's a scientific reason, but that seems to be helpful. So the next one is sometimes your file is too small, too small in diameter for your case. So sometimes an eight file is just too small to to, to elicit a decent reading. You know the beauty of well, look at that. <laughs> Lucky it's extracted. The beauty of doing extracted teeth is you can actually see what's going on. So. We're just doing, you know, let me know in the comments below if you've done mandibular or anterior teeth. You know, they can be really frustrating, very difficult. So we're just going slow with extracted teeth. It makes us, gives it so much more, it builds some confidence. If there's anything I can help you with is just build confidence with extracted teeth. So sometimes, you know, your apex locator doesn't work well with small file, small diameter files. So just increase the file size. Sometimes, you know, not mandibular anteriors, but these central incisors need larger files. We just had a case the other day with one of our newer practitioners where our working length started developing it at, this is a headstrom, but just say, for example, this was a 50. So we finally get a, got a solid reading at a 50 size and we're going to finish the case at, take a guess. Where is it here? Not 80. So this is 80. It's actually at 100. We're going to finish the case. Now you could ask, would you regenerate that? I mean, you could. Um, food for thought. Anyways, that's a, I want to talk about in the next video is just about apical size diameters because, you know, it's really important. I don't know if they teach it really well uh, in school, but apical size diameter as well as length. So we're always worried about, are we close enough? Do we have patency? But one of the just as important is the size of your finish. So getting, getting back to getting your working length. So sometimes with an eight file, you know, eight or 10, it might not be sufficient enough to get, to elicit a decent response from your apex locator, solid, stable response. So what you do is you increase your file size. So go, I'll go ahead and take my 15 file, I'll place it to length. And then we're going to check for a working length. And look at this, this is, you know what I'm talking about? This frustration here, where you're just kind of like, ah, oh, trying to get this in here, I'm trying to finagle it so it's like around here. Well, there's a couple tips. One is you can, I've shown this before, you can take a file and use it like a little conductor, like this, that's helpful, you can see, and then you can watch wind your file down the length, and then you can still get your working length, like that. And you know, a quick thing is, is that Depend, you know, you can measure your your the dimension of your rubber stop. So some stops are these are 1.5 millimeters. So if I were to, you know, I know that this just knowing this dimension. Say for example, it's this isn't the case, but this is snugged right down. I could quickly say that this is 25, you know, 23.5 millimeters long where my working length is, whatever that is. But this is frustrating. So what you can do is just have easy access. Not it's not always. Easy access is simple to say, but sometimes you just got to go through drawers to find these things. I get it. But sometimes a 31 millimeter file is helpful. If 
for working length. Because then you have more space, let me get my hand out of the way, you have more space to be able to work. So what I'm gonna do is we're long, so I'm going to, there, that's that apex locator like, so what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna unwind, so unscrew, look at that. This is a stable working length right here. So I'm gonna to go to one red bar, we'll get it stable. There's four, two, one, that's stable. Oh, it's a beautiful feeling. So what we're gonna do then is we can take our, what I'll do, it's hard with an extracted tooth here, but in real life, what I'll do is I'll take my, my other index finger and I'll push pressure against the tooth and slide my rubber stop down to the working length. And let's just recheck to make sure it hasn't moved. And I'm gonna unwind just a hair and we'll repeat that one more time. There we go, boom, solid. The tooth is moving in the alginate, that's what's happening. <laughs> Anyways, this is our solid working length. So, you know, in necrotic teeth, they'll typically go to here. Dr. Ricucci talks about going to just right above where the green bar was. It, you know, I don't know if it really matters. Biologically, I think it does. But in terms of the procedure of endo, what I'm gonna do is, if when I know that I'm here, I'm gonna subtract a millimeter from this working length. So, they essentially end up to here anyways, but it's just kind of force of, you know, force of habit. Now, what you can do, so we'll go ahead and measure this. So we'll take that out, we'll go ahead and measurement, measure it. So let's do this. Got that, so we're at 20, can you see that 20? So I'm at 23, depending on how I move that little thing. So I'm gonna subtract a millimeter, so 22 mils. Now, that's perfect because what you can do is if, you know, your rubber stop is in the way, we'll just use it on these, these files here. So 22 is my working length. So you see these little bands? It took me a while to memorize them, but what they're useful for is if, you know, if you get comfortable with endo, what you can do is just quickly use those little measuring bands, those little marks on the file to you know, give, give yourself an estimate. Instead of playing with the rubber stop, you know, you're doing a working length estimate, you can just kind of like eyeball it and be like, okay, my reference point is at, say for example, you know, the 20 mark right there. I'm like, okay, I'm at 20. So what are those numbers? Well, every file's a little bit different, but this system from Denseply, I'm not paid by Denseply, I'm not paid by anyone. 18, 19, 20 are the first bands, then 22, and then 24, 25, 26, and then 28. So that's on the 30 mils. Now we don't always use 30, so I, I completely get that. So on the 25, I'll just tell you what they are as I memorize. So 18, 19, 20, and 22. So that's useful. Say for example, you don't have any 31 mils and you're kind of like, ah, I don't know what my reference point is, blah, blah, blah. And say, let's do this as an example. Yeah, let's do this. So as an example, we take a working length. Let's get that right down to right at the top. So this is another you know way to check for your working length. If it's if you're moving the file and it's stable, it's the work you know your measurement is move your apex locator is moving with you. So I'm slowly screwing. I'm screwing that file in. So I'm going to go to one red bar or one green bar for example. So let's take for, say for example let's take a look and see does that match up with a reference point? Well, it doesn't really. But say for example you're kind of you know you're just you're in the ballpark, you're looking for a working length estimate, you can use, you know, you've taken, I don't know, your, something's happened and your rubber stop is off. This is a quick way to look. Quick way to look to see if, you know, if you've got your working length using those little bands and then you're off to the races. Anyways, hopefully that helps and we'll talk to you soon. Cheers.